Hironobu Sakaguchi is a well-known Japanese video game creator, especially within the Japanese RPG fanbase. Widely recognized and praised as the lead creator of the Final Fantasy series, he's also well regarded for working on many other beloved Japanese role-playing games like Xenogears, Chrono Trigger, and Super Mario RPG to name a few. Being a part of many games within Square, either as a director, producer, writer, designer, or supervisor, he left the company shortly after directing the film Final Fantasy The Spirits Within, not long before Square's merging into Square Enix. With the financial support of Microsoft Game Studios, Sakaguchi went on to found his own studio called Miss Walker, during which he went on to help create an amazing JRPG for the Xbox 360 called Lost Odyssey. How's it going everyone? I'm Tazen and welcome to my must try recommendation for Lost Odyssey. Developed by Miss Walker and Phil Plus and published by Microsoft Game Studios, Lost Odyssey was released in Japan on December 6, 2007 and the following year in Australia, North America and Europe on February 8th, 12th and 29th, 2008 respectively. The first and only game in the series, this Japanese RPG was the second title to be developed by Miss Walker after the release of Blue Dragon on the Xbox 360 in 2006. The game was directed by Daisuke Fukugawa, who had previously worked on games like Legend of Mana, Final Fantasy Tactics and two Yakuza games, and it was produced by Takahiro Kaminagiyoshi, who was the event director for The Legend of Dragoon. Hironobu Sakaguchi was the designer for the game and the lead writer of the story. One of Japan's best-selling authors, Kiyoshi Shigematsu, was a co-writer for the story for writing the visual novel-like dream sequences. The game was also composed by Nobuo Uematsu, who is a well-loved and highly regarded composer for many of the Final Fantasy games. The story of Lost Odyssey takes place in a large world full of diverse and unique environments, creatures, cultures and traditions with thousands of years of recorded history. Within the past several decades, however, massive amounts of magical energy have mysteriously increased across the planet, causing strange phenomena including the transformation of wildlife into never-before-seen deadly monsters. During this troubled time though, several nations have been studying and developing new technology which can harness the magical energy, creating what's known as the Magical Industrial Revolution. The story itself revolves around the main protagonist, Kain, who is an immortal human and mercenary that has lived for a thousand years and is unable to age or be mortally wounded. Despite living for so long, Kain can only remember the past 30 years of his life. The game begins with Kain fighting in one of the largest wars between the two most advanced magic harnessing nations when a massive meteor mysteriously appears in the sky and falls on the battlefield, killing almost everyone in the vicinity. As one of the few survivors from the battle and the only survivor from the meteor's site of impact, Kaim is sent on the journey to find out who and what could have summoned this devastating magic. Along the way, he begins to meet several other immortals who also cannot remember anything from more than 30 years ago, other than that they've also all lived for approximately a thousand years like Kaim. In their search to uncover the truth behind all these anomalies, alongside several mortal companions, they begin to uncover their past memories, why the world is changing and what their purpose is, all while deeply exploring human conflict, perspective, understanding, the value of life and death and what it means to be human. With a level up system and random encounters, the gameplay is traditionally turn-based but with an active timed element whereby during attacks, players can maximize their effects by releasing a button at the right time to intersect two moving rings together. Furthermore, you select the commands for every member in your party at the beginning of each turn, and every character's actions play out in an estimated order depending on both the priority of the commands you selected and the priority of the enemy's attacks. This means you need to strategize the types of commands you select for each character depending on who or what ability you wish to go first and whether it will be before a certain enemy's attacks. For example, magic attacks usually occur last, Physical attacks happen before them, and the use of items often come before any attacks, both from any party member or enemy too. Mortals learn abilities through leveling up, whereas immortals learn abilities from both items and links with mortals. For example, for any mortal that's in the party, one of their skills can be linked to an immortal to learn. Once enough AP has been gained from battles, an immortal can then equip to use that skill indefinitely, regardless of whether the mortal is in the party or not. The same applies to abilities tied to weapons and accessories. When equipped, you can use those abilities, 
And once you've gained enough AP, you then master those abilities to equip these skills in skill slots too. Furthermore, you can assign characters to the front row of battle to deal increased damage and have other characters in a back row to receive reduced damage but create a passive guard barrier for everyone, which wears down per battle from enemy attacks. This is the case for enemies too, so once this protective guard meter is worn down completely, either your guard meter from enemies or the enemy's guard meter from your attacks, greater damage can be done to the side that no longer has that form of protection. The world is vast, with many towns, villages and forests to explore, but with the use of abstraction to allow you to quickly travel great distances between separate locations. It also has an overworld map you can use to traverse through in the ocean and air using various vehicles that become available over the game. As you encounter different people or events throughout the game, Kaim recalls parts of his past memories through the dream sequences. Flashback stories presented like visual novels that tell written stories of Kaim and the other immortals journey over their 1000 years of living. This was Shigematsu's first time working on a video game and the dream sequences stand among the most highly evocative stories and effective forms of storytelling I have personally experienced in a video game. Overall, the game has four discs, with each disc being approximately 12 to 15 hours in play length. The fourth disc, however, can range from anywhere between 10 to 50 hours, depending on whether you stick to the core story, or also complete really fun and story-related side quests and bonus dungeons around the traversable overworld. Despite being considered a hidden JRPG gem because it was exclusive to a console not as well known for its JRPGs and also not as widely sold in Japan as PlayStation and Nintendo consoles, Lost Odyssey sold 40,000 copies on its first day of sale in Japan and hit 100,000 copies in Japan around the time it released in the West several months later. In North America, the game sold over 200,000 copies in its first month of release, and for a time, it was also Microsoft's largest console game, given the game is sold across four dual-layer DVDs. The game also went on to receive extra game and story content in the form of DLC. The Triple Bonus Pack DLC was released on April 25th, 2008, and includes a new dream sequence, a ring accessory, and an item that allows you to access and rewatch all the game's previously viewed cutscenes within the game. The Seeker of the Deep DLC was released on May 23rd, 2008, and includes a bonus dungeon which provides additional story, enemies, equipment, accessories, items, and six new in-game achievements. Additionally, there was one more dream sequence that was released as part of a pre-order bonus on release. The game also received a separately sold strategy guide, soundtrack, and even a book compiling the written dream sequences by Shigematsu. Fortunately, Lost Odyssey has since been re-released as a backwards compatible game on the Xbox One. It is available either as a digital purchase or a free download by inserting and using Disc One from an Xbox 360 physical copy, allowing this game's amazing story to continue to be available for new generations to experience. So there we have my recommendation for what is Lost Odyssey and why you should play this JRPG. I think it is an incredible Japanese RPG, not just for the Xbox 360 console, but among all the JRPGs I've personally played. And I think a lot of the themes and philosophy that is explored through this game's story will stand the test of time. Anyways, thank you so much for watching my recommendation video. I hope you'll enjoy it and hope you may get to enjoy Lost Odyssey after watching this. And yeah, until next video, stay spot on.